Good evening. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to call to order tonight's uh, Scarborough Board of Education workshop. Today is Thursday, February 27th. May I have the attendance, please? Yes. Ms. Durgan? Here. Ms. G Mrs. Giftos? Here. Dr. Gill? Here. Ms. Kendall Wilness? Ms. Layton? She's traveling. Mrs. Scyther? Here. Mrs. Turner? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. And Mr. Bennett? Okay. Can we do the Pledge of Allegiance, please? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Um, obviously, I am standing in for um, Leanne as chair tonight because, unfortunately, she is homesick. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn the workshop over to Sandy and our professional staff. And my one request is that you please introduce yourself for people watching who may not know who everybody is. So. Great, Sandy Prince, and we're here tonight to talk about the proposed calendar that we will be hopefully adopting. Um, I've asked both principals from the elementary schools to be here. A lot of the calendar that changes that took place last year really added value to kindergarten registration and screening. And uh, I thought it would be good for both principals to talk about that and how it went and how it correlated with the calendar. And then if we have more questions about the calendar, we can take it from there. So other than that, we can turn it over to the principals and, and have them introduce themselves and we'll go from there. I'm Jessica Steele, Principal of Pleasant Hill School. I'm Kelly Martin, Principal at Blue Point. Would you guys like us to just chat about what what the process was like and <clears throat> the results? So um, last year was the first um, time I think that kindergarten started a little bit later. Um, we uh, knew that we had some problems and um, well, we posed problems that we needed to solve. Um, <clears throat> We are required, mandated by federal, uh, state law and federal law um, under child find. And so that means that um, all students need, we need to identify students um, who may have disabilities to see if they may be eligible for special education services um, upon kindergarten entry. And so our kindergarten screening process helps us to do that. And um, Kelly can speak to the history of the screening process in Scarborough. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, we've done it um, a little bit differently over the years. A few years back, we were doing it all in March, in a week um, during March, where we were doing registration and screening. And that was very staff intensive, where we had a lot of substitute um, substitutes in place so that our secretaries, occupational therapists, teachers, ed techs, they were all involved. We did it at Wentworth. Um, and, you know, it was... It was an okay process, but again, it cost a lot of money, and it was really staff intensive, and staff weren't really getting the eyes on kids that we wanted them to, and we weren't getting all kids <coughs> screened during that window of time. Um, so then we changed things a little bit, and we tried to screen kids during kinder camp, because that was really popular. Um, and so we moved it to that window, hoping a little bit closer to the beginning of the school year would work. Um, and that wasn't successful just because of, you know, um, staff availability and the demands of the kinder camp program. And it just, we, again, we weren't able to get the number of kids that we wanted to get screened within that time frame. Um, so last year we talked about doing it at the beginning of the school year. Um, which is allowable um, through state statute to reduce the kindergarten year by up to five days for purposes of screening. Um, so we looked at, you know, what's the minimum amount of days that we would really need to do that to accommodate the um, number of kids that we anticipate coming in. Um, and so we, we did that, came up with a plan. Yeah, and what's different about kindergarten versus first and second grade is that our kindergarten teachers, like we said, are, do, are having to do the mandatory 
um, child find screening. So they're using additional assessments, um, which take additional time. So while first and second grade may be able to complete their assessment process in that 20-ish minute window um, <clears throat> on the two days that are allotted, um, our kindergarten teachers are not because it takes around 45 minutes or more for them to do everything that's required. So in order to get all, as our enrollment increases and the number of kindergartners we're seeing come through the doors, um, <clears throat> we needed to make sure that we had time for the kindergarten teachers to be able to see all of the kids that are coming through. Um, so adding up all of the um, time requirements took us to that two-day mark, um, additional two days that we would need for kindergarten teachers to be able to lay eyes and do all the screenings that are required of them. Um, we, we, not, we didn't just make this decision unilaterally. This was a conversation that we had with our kindergarten teachers. We actually surveyed um, neighboring districts um, to see what everyone else was doing in terms of kindergarten screening and start dates. Um, and we, we put a proposal together based on all of that data um, to um, the district office um, superintendent, et cetera, and um, decided that two days could be sufficient um, to get done what we needed to get done. Two additional days? from what was prior. So they already had two days, and so we needed two more days with kinder, just for kindergarten. September 1-2, because <clears throat> it's K-1-2. Oh. <clears throat> um, we've seen some great results um, this year. Um, our staff, our teachers report that because the screening information was timely um, for them, that they were actually able to provide instruction that was responsive to where their kids were. Um, before that, they may have had results back in March or they had it in early June, but because everything was done within a short window of time, um, they could in plan instructionally better for their classrooms. And I think that the most important thing that we, um, was something we feel very strongly about, and I think any principal that you talk to will say that making sure at this age group is that making sure that your classrooms are balanced is really important. And so for us, that means that <clears throat> we have... Um, diversity in our classrooms that we're not too heavy in need um, in any one area um, in our rooms so we have a balance of kids so that teachers feel like they can serve all students needs um, to the best of their ability and being able to to have this time to do that really helped us to achieve that goal yeah and I think last year was the first year we were really able to use screening information for placement which you know was um, was the goal really, especially when we moved things to the, um, the summer, um, we were really hopeful we would be able to use that information for placement and it just didn't work out. So we were really dedicated <laughs> this, this past year um, and we had a tight timeline of how we were going to do that and how we were going to inform parents, um, but it worked and um, we had all the information in terms of screening information and information from preschool surveys and we had um, parent surveys. We had really had all that information at our fingertips as well as, um, you know, sitting down with teachers and talking about anecdotal information that they had seen from kids during screening and, and getting their input about, you know, what they thought and, and what kids would work well together and um, some information from kinder camp and those notes. And so we really had a lot more information than we've ever had about kids um, going into kindergarten, which is really always the big unknown um, for placement. And so I think we really probably had the best placement outcomes that we've ever had in, mm -hmm. in my time working here, placing kindergartners. So yeah. it was really successful. And I haven't been here that long, but that's what um, the kindergarten teachers have said back to us, is that they're really grateful that they had that time and that they had all that information and that they really felt this year that their classes... Um, matched up with you know what they would hope in terms of being able to serve all kids needs so it was valuable yeah question you guys have any questions for us? <laughs> i didn't actually know we were presenting i, I don't really have a question but i yeah. just have like i get a um a lot of feedback about that week being really um difficult for for families mm -hmm. and um if, if they <clears throat> for example use a older you need to use an older child to help out, and then the older kids are in, in school, and and the K two kids are getting are screened only by appointment, so they're home. That that's hard. And then um, so if if we 
Um, I don't know if that's necessarily a you question in, or a question to the group. And then the other um, issue that I've heard is that just wondering whether it makes sense to use that week because they're not, it, although they're using it more fully this year, it looks like, but, but um, you know, with that Friday off and then the Monday off, it, it, I think the, the question is, does it make sense or is there a way to do it better um, <clears throat> so that the families can utilize that time? And we're here for schools, I get that. So, mm -hmm. so but is there, is there an alternative, mm -hmm. um, I guess is my question. I think, I mean, I, we like having, you know, kind of a short week before a full week. It really gets, gives kids just kind of that jump start into, okay, now we're back in school. I mean, they've been gone. Maine has long, a long <coughs> summer period, so um, that, that is kind of like a transition into the real deal, if you will. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, it's, it's really, thing, however, that, however the calendar works out is how we work with it. But we do use that short week as opportunities um, to re-enter kids into school at this age. I mean, they have been gone a long time. So it's kind of a, um, you know, I know at high school they probably hit the ground running with, you know, syllabus and you know, all of that kind of stuff. But we're, we're using it as some transition time, which is really helpful for kids as they come back into to school. I think the, the flip side of that transition time is the difficulty that I have. I mean, so I have the same, I've heard the same feedback and I have personal experience having kids go for one day of school. And I think that it's really tricky to ask a really little kid to go to school for one day and then have a four day weekend. Um, I think if it was maybe just a regular weekend, it wouldn't be as much of a problem. Um, but I, and I understand what you're saying about like a shorter week, but one day is, I, 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 I've said this for two years, I have such a problem with it. So I, I'm just wondering, like, is there any way that, <clears throat> I mean, so they have one day, like why wouldn't you just start them on the eighth with everybody else? You mean the first and second graders? Oh, first and second. Yeah. Or, or move it back a day, I mean, but then you're taking away one of their appointment days, I guess. I, I just, I, I think Alicia's point is a good one, and like I said, I've had a lot of feedback about this, and um, that would still be a shorter week. I don't know, what I, I just, that's just my it, yeah, opinion. I, mean, I just, it, it's just really them. hard for a little kid to go to school for one day, because you, you get them all geared up, and I, and I think it is also hard for the parents to to try and work around with the enrollment that we have there's no way we could shorten the amount of screening days so i guess we could look at get, adding an additional screening day if we were to do that hillary I, I, we below we'd be below 175 days for those students right because it's 177 overall and they already missed the first and second so that brings them down to 175 i'm doing the math right it's still, well is the first and second it's even still count? a day is <clears throat> We, it's still, I think it's still, it's still a day. A certain screening. percentage of the districts have to of the district has to go to school that day. Okay. Like so we've good. talked about this yeah. before. So yeah. I think I you could still right. hold first and second grade, but mm -hmm. enough of the kids would be in school that it would still count as a day. So I don't think we're bumping up against that statute. Okay. I do remember asking about that last year though too, because I don't think I think we do count September first on this. I'm just looking at this. Do you want to put it on the yes. um, screen? So I'm just looking if you look at the. Um, the no the next one yeah so here it just shows like when <laughs> each kid is going to go to school um like i think are we counting september 1st as yes. a school day in our, our, in our proposed calendar yes. we are we as, are as we're counting them in our yeah. quarters yes everything past the first okay so that doesn't really make sense to me either because not very much of the district is going to school that day well they're being screened well, right but fourth fifth seventh eighth they're in, 10th, they're in transition well, activities, right? so, I mean. Yeah, we made that shift probably four or five years ago when, I, in the past, since I've been here, ninth grade always had this freshman day. Yeah. But none mm -hmm. of the other schools had it, and so yeah. there was a lot of discussion about transitioning from the small K-2 schools to the third grade, so we decided on 369 step-up day where the entire staff and the students could acclimate to the buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love that day, and I think it's really valuable. I'm just, 
To count as a school to day. To count as a school day, sure. I don't know. <clears throat> so I guess that's how, um, you know, we would say September 3rd would be for first and second is that transition <coughs> day like three, six, and nine have, but. True. It's, it's just okay. such a mess for people to yeah. manage, I think, for <clears throat> planning. And and then you hear, well, if we have to take it off anyways, at least, you know, it would be nice if we could do something. And they can't really do that. And so, I'm, you know, I'm empathetic towards that and just wonder if we can brainstorm a, a, a way to, to make it a little bit more palatable. And if not, then not. But it's just something that I hear and want to want to take seriously for them. That, that's all I'm saying too. And I just want to be clear, like I, I think that the improvements that you've made to the screening process for kindergartners are really important and I can see, I mean I used to teach kindergarten, I can see that if you, you know, if you screen a kid in March, they're not the same kid when you get them in September. So to me that makes the most amount of sense for, it, it gives the most benefit to the student and the teacher. And the fact that you've been able to work that into the scheduling and make it work, I think is is great. I don't want I, I think that you guys made a really good choice, and I think that coming back now and saying, you know, and being able to look at it, having done it a year, and saying, okay, well, this definitely works the best that we've done so far. I I don't you don't need to convince me. I I, I think that's great. I just. I mean, and, and it is, oh, and I get that it is hard for families anytime you have, like, an appointment day, right, where you, you're, you're basically in school for 30 minutes and your parent has to bring you. Um, but, and like I said, my biggest, my biggest problem is sending kids to school for one day before a full-day weekend. So, you know, we don't do it with any other students. It's not like they're going as a step-up day. I mean, they, they've been in that school. There's two, two out of three grades. Um, so I just would like to brainstorm. So are you that. suggesting running appointments all three days so yeah. that the schools, that the students don't, grades one and two don't go to school on the third? Well, I personally would prefer that over having one day of school before a four-day weekend. Yeah. But that's just me. I mean, give the I'm the only one talking here. Time. <laughs> in, in I happen to love that one day of school. Yeah, I'm I mean, like I said, I'm the only... Not only do my kids need these back in, I need I to ease back in, mm -hmm. but... I I, I've heard that feedback too yeah. that that one day is easier. I can yeah. go either way. And I'm, I really, I think it's interesting that, you know, and I've heard that feedback too. Um, and to echo Hillary's point about how Im much improved the screening is, it, I didn't understand why the screening process had changed. Mm -hmm. Having older kids in the district and then finding out there was a new screening process, I think it puts um, families <coughs> on edge a little bit to not know who the kindergarten teacher, like that uncertainty right. of not Absolutely. knowing who your kindergarten teacher yeah. is. But once it was explained to me, like the benefits of doing that screening so much later, plus I'm someone who didn't send my kids to kinder camp. So like, hi, you get to meet my kid in March and then you don't see right. them again until September. That, I mean, it's a no brainer for me how that, how much of an improved process that is. And so once I heard that, I said, okay, so the trade-off is I won't, I'll, I'll have that kindergarten teacher uncertainty, but, you know, the pros significantly outweigh the cons. And I certainly don't think that's a hard sell. It's just a communication mm -hmm. point. You know, we just need to make sure that the parents understand. And the more years we do it, you know, right, everybody kind of gains the, that, exactly, mm -hmm. gains that experience. In terms of the sending kids to school just Thursday, I see both. I think I have kids who benefit from it, and I think I have kids who would rather not do it, so <laughs> I can see it both ways. It's hard to rationalize eliminating a day of instruction, even if it's a transition day for first graders, is better for them than being there for one day. Say yeah. that again, uh, please. In other words, the positives for the students, and I understand that it's a disruption for the parents, but the positives for the students is that it is a transition day. And while there are four days in between the time in which they come back, they do meet their teacher and their friends in their classrooms and they orient to school and the processes and have a heads up so it's a high energy day for them. Um, eliminating that and saying 
no day of school is better than a day of school is hard to rationalize. Um, because it, for the students, I think that, and the reason why we have that is to allow them that day to orient, transition, get used to riding a bus again, mm -hmm. um, and start to rebuild that um, stamina of that full day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so my experience with that is, as a, I mean, they're going to have that day no matter what day, no matter what day it is, the first day of school is going to look the same, whether it's September 3rd or September 8th, because obviously they're transitioning into a, a new school. But the, the benefit that I see from a child's perspective is that if you do all that on Tuesday, you get to wake up again and do it again the next day instead of going home for four days I mean, it's a whole thing, you know, you, you start getting your kids to bed early, and then, and it, it just, from a, I'm, and I understand that it's a disruption for parents, but that's actually not You're my problem right. with it. Mm -hmm. My problem with it is that I think that it's disruptive to students. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like just go, like, if going for, like, one or two days, you're not in, like, the school mindset yet, and I think that first day is so important that by you know, after Labor Day weekend, it's like you have to kick it into gear and get in the school mindset. And I feel like that would make that first day like much more productive rather than just going to school for a day um, and still being kind of in like summer mode. And I completely understand your point about losing an instructional day. I'd be happy to add it on at the end. I mean, I would rather end on the 17th or 18th you mean have the students in grade one and two go an extra day? No, all of them. Have all but of the everybody else. So day. you're saying move grades one through 12 should not start the third. You're saying move everybody's first day to September 8th. No, not necessarily. But I mean, <clears throat> so September 1st, we're counting as a day of school, even though, like, I mean, to be honest, half the district isn't going to school. Less so, than half. School is right. in session. Less than half. half. Okay, so I get that, but, but if, we're being, if we're talking about instructional days, yeah. half the kids aren't getting it anyway. So in my mind, to count that as, a, as the 177th day doesn't make sense. Like, I'd rather put another day on so that, okay, yeah, the, the kids in grades 3, 6, and 9 have 178 days. But keep in mind that But then the rest of the kids have 177 and 176. Yeah, I know. I get, I, I get that. It's an extra day. And we can only have so many days different than the both program. Like right. that's right another we're like, Yeah, we're right. right up against that usually. We well, I don't know. I mean, days. I'd like to know what. That, well, I'm, if what you, that I'm looking is. at calendars as as we're talking, and it it seems like so far I've only looked at a couple, but it just seems like we're sort of a little different than other people in terms of when we start. So. Um, to speak to how we have to compare to, like, there are some yeah, part partner fun. districts that we have, right? Mm -hmm. So, Wyndham, Gorham, um, Sad Six, and Westbrook for the purposes of vocational programming. We have to um, caucus together and develop our calendars jointly. And by law, we cannot be off um, five days or more Thank because you. that would interrupt um, that programming. And so currently, the way our schedule is, um, we have three uncommon days um, with, with them. So and we can only have five. So right? if you look at Wyndham, Wyndham had their first day of school September 3rd this year, what, using the school calendar. What day of the week is that? Though? Yeah, I, I can tell you what our partner districts are doing. Oh, that would be great. Yep. So for example, the start dates for students and again, I, you know, the notes that I have don't speak to specific grades. It just speaks to overall. So RSU 14 is starting on September 1st for students. Gorham is starting on August 31st for students. Scarborough is scheduled to start on September 1st. Sad 6 is scheduled to start for September 2nd. Um, and, um, and so that is the start dates. And then there's also the other thing that we have to take into account is we all have different numbers of contractual days. Mm -hmm. So some of our partner districts go 175 days and some go 177 days like we do. And what's the statutory mandate, 175? 175.
but you know, but again, the way in which we have the 177 does work to our advantage, um, you know, for things that happen. So for example, this year, you know, Wentworth closed for two days because of, a, you know, an emergency, and we don't have to worry about those students making up those days because the, you know, 177 minus two, we're still at the 175. Can I ask a question about, and this is probably just my not knowing, but on September 1st and 2nd, you have a, I'm, I know very well about kindergarten screening, but can someone tell me about the one and two? Why do we have two days for grade one and two screening as well? Um, we used to have one day, mm -hmm. um, and for similar purposes, just to kind of meet and greet students and do the do kind of um, screenings to kind of get the baseline level for the beginning of the year. Um, and as class sizes changed over time, it just became those schedules got too packed. So um, we moved it to two days at some point. I can't remember how so, many years. Yeah, so are we screening? Are we, what screening We're are we doing, doing um, during those literacy and yeah, math? Yeah, doing math and literacy local assessments. Yeah. So that's asked of the teachers mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of the year. When it was one day, it was more meet and greet. Right. But they wanted to complete the screening that they usually end up folding in over the course of a week or two. Which so is they now difficult. go by appointment in order to do that screening in the first two days so yeah. that instruction can start right from there. Okay. Sense. And it gives, the, it teacher, makes it gives sense. the teacher a half an hour with each student individually. individually for those first two days. Parents update paperwork. Yeah. Which is so always some, part of the one day. But okay. so, so we don't just screen kindergartners, we screen the first three years of their enrollment in the district. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're only data. It's not screen. We're only yeah. data yeah. to screen kindergartners. Well, right. So, so like I guess my question these is, are, is. These are assessments. Literacy these are assessments. Literacy. Yeah. These are literacy assessments. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not They've already been placed. placed. Mm -hmm. So it's not. So then do other districts do that as well? Is that is that a unique Scarborough thing? I'm not sure. Do it this way. It just feels know. weird. I don't know. I just, I, I've never seen the way it's written up there. The, my first thought was, like, why are we spending two days rescreening first and second graders? But I understand the literacy piece. I guess I'm just wondering, is that is that overcomplicating this, or I don't know. Do you find big changes over the summer in those students from first to second to make it? I mean, they have final assessments at the end of the prior year, and so. I mean, every once in a while, of course, there's kids that, you know, we have like a summer slide and that kind of thing. Um, so, but I think really the point is that teachers are getting to know kids individually. Our class sizes are, you know, in the 20, 1920. So to be able to meet every student individually before the very first day of school, get to know them, talk to their family. We've had a number of students that have moved into Scarborough um, over the summer at every school. Um, so you're, you're actually meeting families as well. So it's that that relationship building and personal touch and, and helping kids to acclimate um, to where they're going to be you know, every day for the next year is, is also part of the, um, that experience. Even though it's 20 to 30 minutes, it's important. Um, we don't get that until open house. So. Yeah. so I think that's really valuable, but just thinking about this from an equity standpoint, like I can only imagine that all the teachers at Wentworth would also love to do that. I mean, I know these kids are little, but I mean, a third grader is little too. Do you think the teachers of Wentworth would want well, like, to meet families? Well, I'm just saying, like, if, or? I mean, I get that we have we don't know kids who are coming into kindergarten. Like, it's so valuable for us to be able to. Well, we have to screen them, but it's also valuable to be able to do an entry level assessment. Do an entry level sure. assessment. Like, we don't we can't say, hey, um, Mrs. Steele, what was read like in first grade? Like, can you give me some? You know what I mean? Like. We don't have that background data for any or background information for any of those kindergarten kids. So, and I, I, I hate saying that. I hate well, myself for saying this because I am a teacher. But like, no, I, I, right. That's right. Like my point is like if we are going to allow for our first and second grade teachers to have that really nice, dedicated time to be able to do some assessments that they would normally have to do during the year and to make their students feel more comfortable. Why aren't we doing that for the rest of the the elementary grades? Asked to do that. There are assessments that teachers need to do across the 
grade levels, absolutely. Right, and so we're giving first and second grade teachers like the additional, the time. additional time, time, and we're not giving it to other teachers. Well, I'm looking at it more That's from not as we're giving it to other teachers as <clears throat> could we, could, I mean, potentially those kids are losing out on two, two instructional days. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you have to think about where K two kids are at, as opposed to. I you couldn't know, hear you. I, can, I think you have to think about where K two kids are at with their level of independence and the time they may need to, um, especially in first grade, to kind of do some of those things. And um, it's a critical year. I mean, giving an assessment to three through five has to be a little bit easier than assessing. One, two, right? I'm not saying that they shouldn't have that time, no. and I think they probably should have. No, I get that, but asked like for that time. Different. But it's it's just a different beast, I think, at K two. But um, you're drawing an arbitrary line. Let's be honest. Right. We're drawing an arbitrary line because of the way our district. I, mean, I don't set think up. anyone has drawn that line. No, I I'm, I'm saying we oh, are. Yeah. We're yeah. saying that right. we can do it for K one two because those are our primary yeah. grades. Right. But like in reality, K through six is elementary school, and how much of a difference is there? between second and third grade, first and second grade, third. You know what I mean? Like, we're drawing that line because of the way our district's set up. So you're saying don't make know those days be. assessments for everybody or take them away for one, two? I think, I don't know. I think she's just calling I'm out just the discrepancy and, yeah. and the arbitrary raising, issue. Right, I'm just raising an issue Yeah. I see as a... Well, something you said a moment ago I think is really important. And, and I thought of that when I saw this K-1-2 up there. I thought, oh, well, of course there are students that move in. In one and two, we didn't have the benefit of having them as kindergartners. So having that assessment entry level, it's basically a year or maybe it's two years late. But to Hillary's point, I can see exactly what you're saying. I mean, why wouldn't other grades want to do that? To take a time to do that assessment. Something, conversation we've become very familiar with over the last year is about equity and time in and outside the classroom for our, for our um, professionals. And when those students come in at 3-5 and at mm -hmm. middle school, usually the um, the guidance counselor, and this happens at the high school, usually the guidance counselor or the instructional coach will be involved in sure. assessing the student right. um, and reviewing the records to then um, make a recommendation and work with the principal on a placement. Um, K-2 does not have students for moving new in. Students moving in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, K-2 does not have a guidance counselor. K-2s do not have guidance counselors to help out in that process. Um, and the instructional coaches are split across three different buildings. So there's a little bit less capacity there at K2 in order to acclimate new students into the school. I think the principals do a lot of that work in meeting with the parents and assessing where students are. Sometimes I get called into that process. Um, sometimes the instructional coaches will do that, or sometimes the principals will call on a particular grade level Social teacher to do some of that. Why don't we have guidance counselors at that level? It's been a budget. We had one person across three schools. I think it's a um, an issue over the years where we had a reduction. We had one, but we were never able to build additional staffing given competing needs during budget time. Um, that would yes. indeed help us to so move from a reactive to a proactive earlier intervention be, system. Not but an it's easy an, share between the three schools. It's no not, kidding. No. It's not an easy share. Yeah. And just to the point about do we, the question was do we take it away or do we add it for everybody? Um, taking it away for first and second grade, those are expected things that teachers do at the beginning of the year. Taking it away means that they would be away from their students for at minimum the first two weeks. So they would not have a full day of school. We don't have the internal coverage opportunities for all of our first and second grade teachers. Um, to rotate through um, how right. they would be screening. Um, so they basically would not have a full day with their class for about two weeks into school. So it's a time. Screen, you mean screening all the They had to screen one, all two, 20 of their kids, but it was assessments. all the doing the assessments. Are you kindergarten? No, first no, and second grade. First, first and second grade. Yep, but they needed to screen all 20 of their kids. And doing their literacy assessments, their teacher's mm -hmm. college inventories? Because we would need to relieve them to be able to go do that. They would need release time, so we need to have coverage, which means we put together a schedule of who's going to go when, and the, it would take a long time. Well, we do those time. assessments at the end of the year, right? So we're talking about the changes of the summer. There, are, Yes. Okay. Um, at the 3-5, it's a little bit easier for um, building support staff to assist and cover a classroom while the teacher's doing that outside the door. Sure. 
that's the point around the third, fourth, fifth graders being a little bit more um, independent and mm -hmm. able to um, focus on other things um, while the teachers were doing a screening. But that's in their first week of school, too. Yeah. And they're transitioning back to school, too. Given so, the differentiated levels of instruction that I know the kids get at K2, I would not be in support at all of removing those screening times for those, those I don't, students. I don't think we should remove them either. However, I do think that it's inequitable. Right. I agree with so, that. So the, so the bigger question then I think is how does our Wentworth staff and and professional staff feel about it. Right. I, I would like to hear that. I would like to hear some feedback on that before second reading of the okay. calendar. I will make a note of that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, and this has really, I don't, I mean, you, you can speak to it on behalf of your staff, but it doesn't really have anything to do with kindergarten. I, I know a lot of teachers who, I mean, I know a lot of teachers, and obviously I was a teacher, but like one day of one staff day before school seems so intensely inadequate. Absolutely. That Absolutely. We can't <laughs> argue with that. that. I speak yep. to that. I'm just, yes. I mean, I'm right, right? Yes, like, you're right. Okay. So how can we alleviate that? Like, like, I'm looking at the staff days, and maybe, Monique, you can speak to this, too, sure. because I'm looking at the staff days, and there's a random one on the 9th of October. Well, it's not quite random. Well, I don't mean random. I mean districts also have that day where okay. in October. Part of the common calendar. Part of the common calendar. Common calendar. <laughs> okay, well, this, these are the things yeah. I want to know. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and then the third looks like a staff day, November 3rd. Well, November 3rd is a staff day. For <laughs> oh, only for the high school. Okay, so that's a staff And only this year another. because of the election. election. Yeah, that's okay. And then election. That's fine. Okay, and then the other one is the day before. No. It's March 12th. March 12th. And that's okay. another partner district common day that we have up until we have not participated in in the past. Okay. Um, but as we talked through the calendar this year, um, there is a lot of shared professional development opportunities that happen mm -hmm. on that day uh, that we're not able to fully participate in because we can't um, get the number of substitutes that we would need. For people to participate mm -hmm. and we also got feedback um, that perhaps having a professional development day at the end of May is not the best timing for that mm -hmm. but I think um, you know you make a great point Hillary in terms of um, we don't have a lot of staff development days in the teacher contract I know that right <laughs> <laughs> I'm well aware um, um, what about the the six no. What if what is the random Friday that we get off before a whole week of school? It's usually those days are a result of offsetting the time that teachers put in. April sixteenth. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's twice right. a year. Right. It's for parent conferences. I know. Right. It's um, a compensation day, and then in November yeah. there is a date on the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. That is the other flex day. Those are the other. So we have five. Um, teacher workshop days in the calendar, and two of them are flex days um, as a result of conferences. To compensate that teachers for the additional time for teacher conferences. Like such a waste. Okay. The, Monique, the screening for um, assessment, excuse me, for grades one and two. Um, it's really, it, it's not really screening yeah. assessments, it's really our literacy assessments that the teachers do. Should just call it assessments. Uh, assessments. assessments. Yeah. Yeah. assessments. Yeah. So the assessments for one and grades one and two, yeah. you do it in the spring and then you do it again in the fall. Are you spring looking for, fall. are you looking for changes over the summer or things yeah. that yeah. you might have missed in the first? We want to inform instruction as closely to when instruction is going to happen, so yeah. Want those teachers to have, know where those kids are at. So why do we do it in the spring then? To see how far they've come Growth during right. the year. It's baseline, and then you go you're to the end of the year. Doing report cards at the end and of the year, my, right. and then you're, and then my kid knows which book box they get to go book mm -hmm. shopping from. Whether they're, whether they shop what, for the, the summer. Box and F. No. Well, no. Anytime. So they, well, they have they a level. A, I mean, can we just be clear that the, there are not only two assessments during the entire year? Right. 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 They're assessing. Right. Kids right. They're assessing kids right. all the time. But these are like. Um, 
more formal. Some, some more, well, they're benchmarks, yes, thank you. Like, well, they're also assessments, for example, if students aren't yet reading or on their path to reading, there might be sound letter ID assessments that might be, there may be high frequency words, checks on their vocabulary, but also reading inventories to get a sense of where students are in terms of instructional level or independent reading. And we want the students engaged in knowing where they are so they can set reading goals for themselves. So in the spring, you are reading goal this, and the teachers encourage students to read over the course of the summer. One thing I've learned about reading and growth and learning is it's never really linear. Students take jumps in their learning. Sometimes they take step backwards, depending on how much um, uh, reading they're exposed to over the course of the summer. But sometimes they can skip a level or two or three in just a couple of months. So it, it really is because their growth is not really predictable in some, you know. Um, so that's why we do in the fall and the spring. Thank you. So does anyone have any ideas on how we can get an, an additional day before school starts for our teachers? I mean, because it's not, they don't just get that day to, to go and set up. I mean, they have the school district-wide meeting and they have the, I mean, I mean, September 1st would I mean you have grades 3, 6, and 9 there, but I, I would imagine, I mean, I may be wrong about this, but a lot of the staff don't have students that day, right? I mean, there's only three grades. Right. right. And that's right. another. Well, in K-1 and 2, are, but K1 and right. 2 are there all day, and they're meeting with parents all day. Yeah. Right. We're right. But right. So, so they're, they're not inequity, setting up their classrooms. The inequity right time, is that yeah. grades 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12 have an extra day when that's nobody right. else does. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the staff. I can only speak for the middle school. I know that on that day, even though it's a sixth grade only day, our seventh and eighth grade teachers are allotted a certain amount of time with the sixth graders so that our sixth grade teachers can get planning time mm -hmm. and release time so that they can work on other things too. So I know that there are deliberate um, plans and it sounds like um, Miss Ketch is nodding we but the high school do does the same thing. As well. mm -hmm. yeah. So at K one two that doesn't they're with kids. No, I know that. Yeah. They're with kids, but they're also given scheduled time to do those assessments. The other grades aren't, so it kind of balances out, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Staff are busy. Right. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. They're, yeah. No, we're really busy. Yeah. I don't want this to come. Yeah. I don't want the end result of this for anyone to think that we think. People have free time on right. their hands That's because I know for a fact that they don't. I'm talking about an equity, yeah, right, an equity structure. That I mean, yeah. Um, so I guess I, 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 I mean, me personally, I'd like to see that question answered before second reading, and I also um, would like to hear if anybody has any ideas on how to get uh, another day for our teachers. And I want to find out how much a day of school costs us if we were to add another day of school to the calendar. Oh shoot, we can't do that because of the contract. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Let me scratch that last note. The last one you can cross out. <laughs> cross out that last note. Does anyone else have any other questions or comments about the calendar? The only um, piece that we've had some discussions about, we, I guess we can, we should bring it back to leadership council, is because of the snow days the past couple of years, there was some conversation, particularly K-5, with the electronic report card to move the end of term trimester two mm. to the 26th as opposed to the 19th. And what that would do is provide 60, term two would be 66 days. And if some of those were snow days, then they would obviously be added on to the end of the year. Taking those five days away from the end of the year puts term three at 51 days. So it might be a, um, might be something um, that the board might be open to is switching that so that it would um, allow for some more flexibility during that second trimester. But aren't you then taking the same risk if there aren't any snow days? Or yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 
it's more difficult at 612, particularly high school, to move that at all. Mm -hmm. um, we, I know every year we have some discussions when we have those snow days, there isn't enough time, but because the high school schedule is tied into mid-year final exams mm -hmm. and athletics, it's, it's a much more complicated schedule to shift. But that would not impact the five-day piece. So you would shift it for the entire district? No, just the K-5. Because uh, we're on trimester. Right. Oh. So I'm, I'm, it would make, you'd lengthen trimester two and then shorten trimester three. But what? With the idea kind of you're adding. Hedging, right. your, be hedging, hedging your bets. Hedging your bets that you're adding days. You're going to gain those right. days back on the other Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 I just have a question. This, um, so the first three days are K appointments, and then the fourth day it says K is notified of placement in the open house. Are there also appointments that day? Well, or there, there could be if we have any, yeah. if we need it. But mostly we're making, we're finalizing the placement, placement notifying okay. parents. Teachers are doing their final prep yeah. um, for kids because we're making those decisions, and then we're. We're sending emails. <laughs> okay. Did they find they had time last year with that day? Because I know they always make like nice name tags. And uh, yeah, that's what they, they were doing. Them. Them. Yeah, we kind yeah. of pre-planned with that my okay. bike, so they didn't have to do it all by Gosh, themselves. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um, I think. With that, we will uh, conclude our workshop for this evening. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we will take recess until 7 o'clock, and then we will reconvene for our business meeting.